What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we are in, uh, we have two more episodes of Kenobi. Um, we're going to talk about three and four. And the third episode, um, Brian, I have, I had a conversation with Neil. Shout out to you, Neil. He's, he's been watching Kenobi. He really loves um this show this is the one show that he, he he's consistently watching usually he doesn't watch anything until two or three years later but um Brian you had some reserves regarding Darth Vader's introduction or his use in the episode and I started thinking about it, and I do agree with that feeling that the way they, I don't know what you what you saw in the performance or how they did him that had you sort of not jumping for joy for Darth Vader. Um, I'm interested in hearing what you have to say about um, the use of Darth Vader in, in, in episode three. Um, what did you what did you think of that introduction and how that episode ended? Um, so it's kind of mixed. I, if we're just, you know, I liked, I liked his, I don't know what to call it, his advance down the streets where he choked out several people in a row. I, I, I didn't mind that. That. That to me fit with this angry, the, the image of the angry Darth that I thought we would see uh, a little more temper and a little more evil on display. So I like that. I didn't love the confrontation with Kenobi. Um, there was certainly drama when they're first, you know, you could, they, they see each other for the first time. But I almost kind of would have rather they didn't cross swords in that in that scene that somehow Kenobi could have weaseled his way out of there without actually fighting him because the fighting didn't look that great and I know what they were trying to do which is they were trying to say like look Obi-Wan has shut himself off from the force for so long his skills are kind of in decay and Vader's kind of taunting him right he's got all this pent-up rage so he's doing the classic villain mistake of like i'm gonna stretch this out and make him suffer you know so i i got the trope of what was happening but i wonder if we're gonna get to the end of this show and the second duel which i'm assuming will be a real duel and we're gonna kind of look back and say maybe we should not have had them draw swords in episode three i don't know that was just like my two cents about it and it just didn't quite sit right like i liked the episode overall it was very intense like i said it was like i was gripping my chair watching it um i really liked some of the stuff with the inquisitors as well in this in this episode in that episode but yeah that there was just something about that initial confrontation which confirmed the rumor that obi-wan was going to be burned spoiler alert in uh in the episode but yeah, I don't know. It, it just didn't quite make it for me. I don't know. What, what was, how did you feel when you realized that, oh, they actually are going to draw lightsabers and actually go at it for a little bit here? I didn't mind the, the lightsaber match. What I found frustrating, Brian, was they wasted an opportunity with Vader when he was in his castle. Um, the first time you hear, hear him speak is with Reva. I think they wasted that. It was an unnecessary thing to do, especially knowing that we're coming to that point where we're going to see him talk to Kenobi. I think that should have been the moment where you heard Vader speak for the first time. And then realizing, oh snap, is James Old Jones, or the, you know, well, uh, we, sort of. It's sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the re-speecher of James yeah, Earl Jones. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So 
to me, that was a wasted opportunity, and and it sort of didn't give me the same impact is if if it would have been we waited till their first encounter. So that that was the thing that bothered me the most. What did you think of his line? I am what you made me. Did that have the impact that it was supposed to for you? I think it would have had that impact had we not wasted that uh, that that conversation with Reva. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So. I think that was my my biggest gripe with that episode. Um, the lightsaber thing, yeah, it was it wasn't uh, the 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 version that we got in. Um, it was, wasn't even close uh, uh, of uh, episode three. Uh, so yeah, but that's you know what, what I mean. Like they set, they set that up. Like Vader wasn't even trying. He only had one hand on the saber. And Obi Wan, they're trying to reinforce this message that he's been disconnected from the Force, so he just, he doesn't he, he's not he's not he's not operating with his A game. Although I will say I texted you this, I am now officially on the lookout for the Rocky style Jedi training montage, <laughs> like Episode Five. You know, you think I don't I don't think we're gonna get that. I don't think you we're don't gonna think get so. That. I but think how, how are his skills gonna how are his skills gonna come back up that quickly like? We'll talk about episode four. They clearly are recovering, right? They they made it at a point in episode four to show you that he's getting it back little by little. Yeah, but he's he's you know he's got to make a couple leaps here to you know go toe to toe with Prime Vader. So I don't know. I kind of want the. Well, we don't know. know what Prime Vader even looks like other than what, Rogue you know, One. Other than where Rogue One, yeah, that's it. But that's not like anything. It's still not. It was impressive, but nothing like episode three. Right. Well, as I said, Rogue One Vader is basically the same as Luke at the end of Mandalorian. It's like they look Im they look invincible, but against non Jedi opposition. Yeah. So it, it it is a little it is a little different. Yeah. So. Uh, but I still find the show, Brian, very compelling. And I don't know about you. These are the little things that bother me, Brian. I don't know how close you've had your face next to fire. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure you would have some scars on your face. He was in there a long time. Yeah, he was exactly. in there a I'm long like... time to still have his beard and his hair intact. That's what I'm saying, man. And then in episode four, when the water comes rushing um, and they close the door, so you're going to tell me no water came through? None. These little things bother me. It's like, come on, man. Anyway, uh, yeah, it gets fire, but but I still find the show very fascinating, Brian. Oh yeah, no, it, it yeah these these are these are the complaints of like little things that we would edit and change that we think could have made a difference. But like I said, the the tension of these episodes is unreal. Like I find like this is yeah, like I, I'm like at every turn, I'm like, what's coming next? What's coming? I can't wait to see it. I loved episode four actually. I really enjoyed it. That was me too. Leia, uh, Leia is still is getting better and better, and, and and she keeps on reminding you. They they really um, did a good job of connecting the young Leia versus the old Leia, and how old Leia used to be, and how this little girl is. So it's like you feel like this is young Leia because of how she acts. She does the same thing. She's not gonna snitch. You know, she's, you know, she's not going to give in and she's going to lie to you. She has to. So, so, so she, she, she's doing a very good, they're doing a very good job with her. Um, they are drawing really nice little parallels too. Like when she's on the Death Star, remember, they're like her resistance to the mind probe is considerable. And then like we see here, like, yeah, same thing. Cause she's force yeah. sensitive. She's in the detention block. And they can't break her. And it's like, yeah, yeah she's kind of had that DNA the whole time. And so that all fits. I also found myself chuckling because I was like, no wonder when they're on the Death Star, she's grabbing the gun and she's like, I'm, somebody has to save us kids. Like, yeah, because she's like, I've been in a detention block since I was nine. <laughs> so like, this is like, this is easy for me. So yeah, yeah I, think, I think those parallels are being drawn really, really nicely. Yeah. I liked an episode four. An episode again. Episode four was dope. I think it was. Really I think four dope. was a little better than three. That was yes. my just yes. in terms yes. of a complete yes. episode. Yes, yes. Um, 
I liked the Rocky Four. It's suicide. <laughs> and they sent Obi. <laughs> and Obi Wan is like, yo, I gotta go in. What's up? Tell me how I get in. Obi Wan is. I liked that old Obi Wan that he sent out on the mission. He'll go by himself. He'll. And 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 he, that was dope to me. That was dope to me. I like that 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 whole sequence. What do you think of O'Shea Jackson? Oh, I, I forgot he was in the show actually until he popped up, and I was like, oh yeah, nice. I like this. I like this. Yeah, <laughs> he did a good job. He did a good yeah, job. He did. he did. He did. He did. Yeah, I I like. See, I I do like. As I said, the show the show is growing Obi Wan before your eyes. Like if you look at. Right, he he's kind of sneaking around on the on Dayu, no saber. He's not really effective with the blaster. He's not really that savvy, quite honestly. He just kind of gets lucky. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this one, you're starting to see like, okay, the cleverness that we see in New Hope, where he just like navigates the Death Star and like mind tricks the troopers and like d- disables the tractor beam. Like here, it's like, yeah, all right, the saber, I like the saber in the dark. That's always cool. Like we pops up, you know, and takes out the troopers and blocks the, starts using the force push and also, so I'm like, yeah, all right. Like he's, he, he's going out and he's starting to, starting to remember kind of some of his, some of his skills. So I, I liked, I liked his action in, in this episode uh, uh, quite a bit. I, I thought he was going to fight Reva. I thought that was actually going to happen. And then they kind of pulled, they pulled that back. It's weird. Like they let him fight Vader for a little bit and then they pulled him back from fighting her. Um, Cause I thought she was really going to, I thought he was going to have to fight her off a little bit to get them off the planet, but, or get them off that, that, uh, that prison. But yeah. What do you think about Reva thus far? Well, I think we got a key. So my thing in episode one and two was I couldn't quite understand like why she was why she was so obsessed with Kenobi. I needed that answered for me because she was there, but the grand has it prisoner, been? what's that? Has it been answered? So yeah, so I think it has in the sense that I think the answer is there's the inquisitors. And you've got Grand Inquisitor, who I still don't think is dead. And you've got Fifth Brother, who wants to be Grand Inquisitor. That's his, like, goal, right? So he keeps talking about, like, I want to get what's mine. Reva wants to be Vader's apprentice. That's what I think. She she rakes that reference to, like, I'm going to be the one standing next to him, not you. And so I don't think she... That's what, to me, made sense. I was like, all right, so she doesn't care about the rank and hierarchy of the Inquisitors. All she wants is to be Vader's number one. And so she understands that the path to that is to get the guy that Vader is obsessed with finding. And I think we got clues in episode four that Reva probably was a Jedi at some point where she starts talking. I I think she's a little girl. Yeah, at the temple. So I think those two things kind of marry into like, okay, that's why she has her own agenda and acts so differently than the other inquisitors in what she's trying to do. And so I'm okay with that. Like I'm okay with that, the infighting and sort of the rivalries there and, and her having a separate, I think it's going to end poorly because we know that Vader has no apprentice by the time we see him in new, in the new hope. So, I mean, I kind of think we, at some point, either she's getting taken out by Obi-Wan or Vader's going to take her out himself, which I think is non-zero possibility, but I like the idea of someone who's like hell bent on being Vader's Padawan. Like I, that's kind of what it strikes me is that she's going for. So yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm okay with it. I mean, she's, I thought she was pretty sinister, like with Leia that worked for me. Like that, that yeah, scene, yeah, yeah, yeah. that she, scene worked she, she for does me. A good, I think she does a good job in being that uh, scary uh, individual um, and uh, definitely makes you think twice about crossing her. Um, one of the other things, Brian, that I'm I'm not too impressed with is the lightsaber work. It, whether they're fighting each other or whether they're using it, the lightsaber work, Reva using it, blocking the the the, the laser. They block shots. a lot of laser shots. Yeah, they they got to make that look more convincing. Come on, you in a, Miss Brian, you in a tunnel. 
<laughs> you got like five dudes on each side shooting. Brian, how do you miss, man? I'm, I mean, they I'm are sorry. storm. They they are stormtroopers. I get it. I Legendary get it. inaccuracy. I get it. I get it. But you're shooting <laughs> on, through a tunnel, my man. There's not a lot of places where you can miss. I don't get it. The I inconsistency is yeah. Well, the inconsistency is the opening scene of the series where the Jedi at the temple are not able to block all the laser blasts, right? They show the Jedi like blocking some and then getting shot down. And then you see Obi-Wan basically is like, you know, three, 350 for 350. <laughs> um, and then Reva's like head to head with a snow speeder and has no trouble blocking all of the cannon fire. And it didn't look um, good. And, and neither of them, neither of them look good. That's what I'm saying. The, 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 the yeah, not enough ninja, right? Not enough ninja to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it just looks regular. It, it's making the lightsaber to me look just like a regular thing and, and not something that the wielder of it is is making it this this awesome weapon. So I don't know. Those, those are my thoughts thus far on the show. Um, but I'm, I'm still catching myself watching the show twice yeah. in a day. I watch it once think about it, do whatever I need to do, and then I'll watch it again just to see it through a different lens. And and each showing is, is still has me um, hooked to the screen to see, to catch all the little details and, and, and really concentrate on the dialogue. Yeah, this, is, this show has also been pretty tight. I mean, the narrative is pretty tight. I like that there's not a ton of like, like I said, the, the menu of characters is not super long. Right, so they are really sticking to people that they can flesh out and develop. Um, like as I said, the bait and switch was that they showed you Luke in the trailer, but Leia is the character they're spending time with in the show. That's fine. We spent plenty of time with Luke in the original trilogy, right? And if you want to spend more time with Luke, as we talked about, Jedi Academy is out there for you. I don't know that I need to see ten-year-old Luke on Tatooine. I don't know that that adds a lot to his story for me. I think because we kind of know what it is, you know, without having seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in New Hope, clearly Luke has no idea that he possesses or has any inkling that he has this sort of uh, force within him. So him being a 10 year old, he is being a 10 year old. That's all. He's being yeah. a 10 year old. So um, any last words on a Kenobi show? Yeah. Uh, so can we talk about this Moses Ingram backlash just a little okay. bit here? I mean, I, I you know, so I, I don't think I have to go I think people know what it is she posted some of the the messages she received in the aftermath of the show coming out you know obviously they were pretty off color and, and racist and what have you and and you know there's Star Wars personnel from Ewan McGregor on down have kind of come to her defense and look I mean the only thing I I have to say to that is you know <laughs> it's a fictional galaxy far, far away. Like, don't act like you can't have characters of all shapes, sizes, colors, race, like, get over it. Like, what, what is the, A, what's the big deal with that? She's doing a fine job in the part. And I just wanna throw one piece of giant hypocrisy at a lot of these people who are slinging the hate in that direction. I would presume that a lot of those people do not have a problem with Darth Vader. And I would ask those people, who is the person most responsible for bringing Darth Vader to life? It's James Earl Jones. And last I checked, James Earl Jones is a very successful 91-year-old African-American man. Yeah. So if you are going to stand on a technicality and say because there was a white guy in that suit that somehow in your mind... Darth Vader is all white and that makes him okay, but Moses Ingram is not because of the color of her skin. I, I think that's, I think that's hypocritical. I think that's absolutely hypocritical. Um, so that's the other thing I would just point out is, you know, arguably the most famous voice in all of Star Wars for all this time from inception yeah. was of a different color than what some of the people throwing hate at Moses Ingram would seem to want Star Wars to be. That's that's unfortunate, and and we did get our answer. You know, you and I had asked the question: Why were the fan reviews so low on Rotten Tomatoes for this show? 
well, this is why, because they went out and review bombed the show because of this this casting. And that's also just. Uh, I think she's doing a fine job. I'm just want, my only concern with the character is what is her end goal? Yeah, we uh, study the performance. We study how the script sets up the character. Like, we don't, I don't I mean, you, neither yeah. you or I see that when we're looking. Yeah, it's like. But if you talk Superman being black, we have, a, we have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> we have to talk but um once again i am enjoying the kenobi show brian you are as well i think uh these last two episodes are gonna be very interesting man very interesting um we didn't get a chance to talk about Kamala, uh kamala khan um miss marvel um but we'll get to that next week um but i'll say so far i like what i'm seeing brian yeah, I think for the target audience, this show is off to an excellent start. It's a really restrained debut. I think this show will be better to talk about. This might have been one where they might have done better to let loose two episodes, three episodes. Like, it's a very contained intro. But I think when we're a couple of episodes in, we have a little better sense of, like, what the character is going to be moving toward. I think we'll we'll be able to talk about it more. But yeah, no, I was I was entertained um showed it to my kid she was in her she was curious right it like didn't really kind of like i said it didn't really let loose with a lot in this episode but she was curious like she wants to see more so that's good that's good this is this that this is definitely a show you you let the little ones watch um because it's very uh it's, it's, it's a very good show I, I i i enjoyed it very very much for first episode um i think it was one of the better ones i'd say um but yeah that's our show um uh let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the kenobi uh series thus far we got two more to go what do you think is going to happen here obviously we're going to definitely get um uh, uh i guess a, a second round for Vader and Kenobi and my whole Brian in order for that to really be pulled off in the way that we want it to be done is that they got they got a little better than what they're looking at when they fight each other. Like, it's, it's, I'm still stuck with Star Wars New Hope in the final battle. That's that's why I'm that's why I'm still there. You haven't gotten me to episode three. Yeah, uh, no, we we no, we we need. You know, we we need we need Ali, we need an Ali Frazier. We need an Ali yeah. Frazier or two, or you know, Ali Frazier three, right? We can't. We already had one that happened in episode three. You know, so we we need we need that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's our show for today. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. <laughs>